The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. Good morning, everyone. This is Paul Akers, and Richard's not here right now. He's having a little technical problem. So we're going to take off Jeffersonville, Indiana, which is just across the border from uh, Louisville, Kentucky, where the Toyota plant is. And we're going to hand it over to Sean and Kenny. And Sean, go for it. Yep, yep. Welcome, everybody. We're really excited today to be talking with you and taking you a walk through uh, one of our facilities. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick little background. Uh, Viking Classics was started in 1972 up in Cory, Pennsylvania, which is located in the snow belt of Erie area, Erie, PA. Um, this facility we uh, purchased in 2018, I believe. Uh, we're a growth oriented company. Uh, it's been traditionally an injection mold builder. So machining and uh, building injection molds that are used in our industry. And uh, this is a really cool kind of experiment, right? You've got this uh, mature facility that's had, uh, you know, people working in it for three decades, four decades. And then we're building out this injection molding capacity and hiring deliberately for culture and blending those two together to create one team that's focused on this culture of continuous improvement, uh, a family feel, uh, eliminating waste wherever we can, making frustration go away, uh, and just really trying to make uh, work better for everybody. Uh, and I'm included in that. I mean, even as a, as a person in management in the company, uh, every day, you know, I just want to make it a little bit better. So uh, my background is plastics engineering. I've been with the company for 15 years. Uh, I met Paul Akers in 2011. I watched a a video of him walking around and, and, you know, encouraging his people and talking about two second improvements. And I told our president, uh, Kelly Goodsell, I said, uh, I don't know, I may have to move to Washington state, but <laughs> I need to, I need to work in a company like that. I think we can do that here. And so we started the journey in our facility in Cory, Pennsylvania with 120 employees. And we've been doing it since uh, 2011. Uh, and had great success. We've transformed the business and uh, as we see it as a recipe. Uh, a recipe for creating uh, a place that people really want to go to. We don't want to drag people to work. You know, we don't want to right. come, come on in. We want people yeah. to feel like this is a good place to be. So uh, I have responsibility for this facility, I guess, on an organizational chart somewhere. Uh, but uh, more than that, uh, I just appreciate working with the team here. They're just a, a great group of people. So that's a little bit about awesome. me. I'm going to turn it over to Kenny. Welcome, Kenny. Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah, my name is Kenny Ulrich, uh, plant manager here at the facility, and we do have a wonderful team. Uh, we've got 19 individuals that uh, have been here from anywhere from 10 to 44 years uh, tenure. Um, I've been with the company 39 years, uh, started out on the floor, cleaning up and making deliveries, progressing through the shop, doing sales over the years, up to the management position where I'm at today, and then in the journey with Sean, to uh, incorporate molding into this facility and, and uh, get everybody on board with two second lean and culture, so. Kenny, let me ask you a question. When you were first presented with two second lean and, and lean thinking, and you'd been with the company 39 years, what was your, were you, was there any pushback from you? Like, this sounds a little crazy, stupid, I don't wanna do it. How, how did that all go with you? No. Uh, We've, we've gone through several owners over the year, and, and the, the original uh, group that started this tool shop um, started with Two Second Lean. I mean, it was they got their employees involved oh. uh, in everything that they did. We had cleaning sessions, you know, 3S. Um, so we had a little knowledge. It wasn't, uh, I guess, deep into it. Uh, right. We got away from it from a, a previous owner, uh, got away from doing any of it. And then we were reintroduced back through Viking. So not a lot of pushback. I mean, it is changed. A lot of people, you know, don't grasp it right off the bat, but we do have a lot of good things going on. So. Wow. So that, that's really interesting. So you have a little history in it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So show us your stuff. We want to look around and see what you got going on. Yeah, so uh, we're going to start, uh, we're going to walk into our break room, which is where we do our morning meeting. We call it a drumbeat meeting. We hold these meetings at every one of our facilities uh, at the beginning of each shift. So I know that's kind of, how do you do that? We're going to talk about that. And we're going to walk through just some of the things that we've added to our cultural 
experience here with people and new employees. So we're going to head over in that direction. Yeah, I like I like also, Sean, that you change it from a morning meeting to a drumbeat, which is really interesting because they have multiple shifts. And I get this question all the time. How do you do it with multiple shifts? Well, nobody's done it better than Viking Plastics. So go ahead. Well, I recall uh, when uh, we were uh, in Japan several years ago, Paul, you, you, yeah. were in, uh, you were asking, how do you do it with multiple shifts? And it's, it's like a lot of things. It's like eating well, right? Having good right. health, lean health. Right. You just got to commit to it and to make a decision on how you're going to work through it. So we have a monitor here that uh, kind of like we take, it, we take ideas from everybody. And right. when I'd been out at your facility and saw how you ran your morning meeting, we decided we were going to put monitors in our meetings as well, be able to uh, have more information, uh, more sharing. We play videos. Um, let me see if I can scroll this down here real quick and this get is it very for you. Cool. We go. We cover our sales. We're very transparent with our our sales. Uh, we we train people in our company on our balance sheet or our income statement. Uh, we go through we go through the eight wastes every day. And I'm going to walk around the room here and just show you some of the things that we have going on. We share improvements and I'll show you those on the walls as we walk around here. Sean, there yes. is an overlap on the drum beat BD, right? So one team comes in like 10 minutes before. What's the overlap? Just because I know people are going to ask. Yeah, so we we have uh, like 7 a.m. Our first shift will be coming in. And so from 7 to 730, that team is engaged in the drum beat meeting and 3S activities. Okay. The, uh, and so at 730, you know, third shift would uh, would leave the facility. Um, and so at 7 a.m. and at 3 p.m. and 11 p.m., we run drumbeat meetings. Wow. And in some of, some of our facilities, we have an extra one at 8.30 that catches people that have a little bit of a swing, different shift uh, kind of work, work schedule. And you told me off camera, Sean, that Kelly, the owner or the majority shareholder or whatever, he, he's involved in all the drumbeat meetings. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a big important thing for us is that we don't want this to be just a, an effort that's for, you know, people that are on the floor, right? right, that are, you know, making steel chips happen and building molds or making plastic parts or assembling things. This is all of us. And he Beautiful. has been a great leader in that. He has, you know, changed the way he approaches the business. And it's been an awesome, awesome thing to be a part of. You know, I'm very yeah. proud of him and what he's done and allowed to have happen. Excellent. So I, I wanted to share real quick as we walk around. So I, this is from Yellow Tools, Michael Altoff, right? You know, Excellent. I just, I loved watching his tour, but yeah. he had this competency matrix. And so we, you know, have created one here as we build out our, our team of injection molding people, and then look at the, the legacy of the people that are in here building molds. We wanted to cover, you know, key, you know, kind of tasks and things that we do, systems, processes, and get a feel for people's competency with it. And so that's something that we've uh, initiated over the last few months here as we've been working to build out the team. And as a, you know, as a leader coming in, you can say, okay, who do I need to talk to if I need to get something done? Who can train me? You know, I really wanna come in and not be a burden when I'm in any of our plants. I wanna be right. able to add value, right? I don't want it, this is not roll out the red carpet for the manager, right? Right. I'm, I'm here to I'm here to work. So that's something that uh, uh, we really uh, have put some emphasis on. Incredible. So we want to create a different experience for people. And so what we do is we're hiring deliberately. Uh, we specifically talk about two second lean uh, in our interview process. We actually have people watch videos. Uh, some of them are Viking videos and some of them are Paul Akers videos from FastCap. And we ask for people to give feedback on what they think about being in a culture like that. And so when people commit, uh, and it's funny to see how excited people get, you know, a lot of people go out and get the book, but we provide this, uh, this box, this goodie box, when pe before people start, uh, just to show appreciation for them being willing to join our team. We want them to know that our culture is important. Uh, we want them to have the, you know, the book, uh, that's something that we talk about every day. Uh, we want them to have some swag and just some goodies and make people feel welcome uh, into our company. Cool. You know, in today's today's labor environment, if you're not doing stuff to, like that, how are you going to retain people? How are you going to get people? You've got to be different. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's a really cool thing about Two Second Lean is that we're not afraid to be different. You know, we're not afraid mm -hmm. to try different things. We're not going to be stuck in the mud, uh, so to speak. Right. 
So this, uh, this is something the teams developed an orientation binder. We want everybody to come in and have access to information. So of course there's certain HR related elements that people you know, need to know about. But when it comes to processes within our plant, uh, we want everybody to have a working knowledge of the things that we do. And so we've created uh, this training book and it allows people to be able to write down their notes and have kind of a repository for the information that they need to do their jobs. And, and by having that you know, in their hands, uh, we just find there's value to it. So we spend you know, hours going through these different elements with people to try to make sure that they're brought up to speed on what we're doing. And you're involved in that as well. Yeah, so I'll do it even remotely. Uh, we use a lot of, uh, our IT department is great. Uh, so they've got us connected with Microsoft Teams and all sorts of stuff. But I, I'll dial in and be going over it with uh, operator, you know, level folks, uh, you know, uh, process technicians, whatever. And I'm right. able to kind of build a relationship by doing that, which is important. Excellent. So we talk about uh, the story of waste and everybody's got a waste story, you know, and we try to tailor it to our work environment, what we're doing. And so we only, we're a raw material converter, right? So we take plastic and turn it into parts. We take metal and we turn it into molds. Uh, and so when we aren't doing that, we have downtime. So we work to fit the eight wastes into downtime uh, because when we, we have these wastes, it holds us back from being productive. It makes our jobs more difficult. It increases the risk of there being a quality problem, which can be, you know, tremendously costly. In our industry, uh, in the automotive industry, uh, you know, they expect zero defective parts per million. And our current defective part per million rate is below uh, 0.5 uh, corporately. And you know, that is just, a, I mean, I think world class is 3.4. So our yep. lean journey is really a, a journey in quality. Uh, and so we train people to see those wastes and to work on those two second improvements. And then we share those, you know, here's, here's the, some of the printouts of before and afters that people have been working on, you know, whether it's a supply closet, whether it's, uh, you know, a workstation out at a molding machine or over at a machining center. And it's always, it's always exciting to see what you find when you start doing a little two second lean, right? You find when you're cleaning out drawers, <laughs> when, when you're working a through the closet, yeah. you know, you, you just, we just get in the habit of accepting the waste that's around us. And I think that's the beauty of two second lean is, you know, we're continually forcing ourselves to, to look at the next thing that we can do better. You know, no, no. I, I, I haven't put my toothbrush in the shower yet, Paul, but uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, yeah, know I have two I, of them. I know. So, uh, but we, we want to, you know, the, the joke was last time or a couple of times I was here and, you know, you go to the restroom and there's no toilet paper and you don't have a process for that. That is a mission critical problem. Yeah, right? absolutely. Wow. So uh, toothbrush in the shower though, Sean, it works great. Uh, all right, I gotta get that added up. Um, we do want to help encourage people to throw ideas out. And, and sometimes people struggle with how do I get the idea of this improvement off the ground? Now, two second lean, we want it to be very simple. We want it to be easy for everybody to do, but sometimes people have other ideas that may require other people to help them out. So we put an area of, you know, what fix what bugs me, what, what's bugging me and what can, you know, can someone come help me out with it? So that's really one of the initiatives that we have in this area of the wall. Um, okay. Just trying to, again, drive that engagement amongst people. And uh, something I think you've heard about in the past, Paul, is our, our Viking Academy. So this is something that we do uh, corporately, uh, where we take uh, applicants to become a part of this journey of really peeling back the onion with more knowledge of lean tools. Uh, we go through the lean toolbox, we talk more about the Toyota production system, but we also introduce people to uh, more detail about different departments in our company. And each of these groups of people represent, you know, multiple shifts, people in the office, quote unquote, people that are on the manufacturing floor. And it's kind of a neat melting pot uh, experience. And, you know, imagine being a, uh, you know, person who's worked for a company for two months or six months and you come in and now you're having this experience 
where you're sitting with, you know, managers and people that have been in the business for 20 years and, and you get to have a session with the CEO talking about, you know, our growth strategy, about acquisitions, oh. about capital spending, about how all the dots get connected. So it's a, it's a pretty impressive thing. So what, what clearly you are developing people and this is the center point of everything you're doing. Absolutely. And so we're going to do now, we're going to, if you have questions, ask them on the way, but uh, we're going to walk out on the manufacturing floor and just kind of show some highlights of areas. Now, this is not a perfect facility. Uh, Kenny knows that. He, uh, he knows we're on a journey. We want progress over perfection at this point, right? Mm -hmm. We know that we want it. We'd love to be perfect, but uh, we want to continue to make progress. And that's kind of one of the key things to what we're doing. Um, you know, things that people are implementing, you know, Kanban cards, uh, you can see uh, this is something that's helping the, the organization here know what we need to order, when we need to order it, where we get it from. Uh, we're implementing QR codes uh, so that we can actually scan and have information. And you'll find that, I mean, we're trying to take the ideas that other people have already run with and implement them and make them part of our processes. Well, wow, beautiful. Beautiful Kanban card too. I like the, the design of it. Yeah, and uh, so Jen actually developed these. Uh, so Jen has a lot of experience with the with the folks at Toyota, and so she's color coded them. Uh, she's created it. You know, does a lot of training inside of our drum beat meeting, which which Beautiful. is an awesome opportunity to pull people together. Uh, so it's been uh, it's been a nice experience there. You know, it's interesting, too, that, Jen, you say she has a lot of experience with Toyota. You know, our Kanban cards are not that shape, but those are actually the very similar to the shape of that Toyota uses. So I think that's really interesting. I don't interesting. know. Yeah. Jen, did you, Jen did, you, uh, did you use uh, the Toyota system one? for? <laughs> I've been through a few places where um, we've utilized Kanban cards. It was easy for us to implement and able for us to um, upgrade our MRP system while still maintaining a good idea of where we were at on our inventory. Good, good, excellent. Nice job, I like them. Thank so, you. Uh, so Paul, one of the things about this plant is it's you know approximately 40,000 square feet and it was, you know, all the machining centers for uh, uh, making molds were spread throughout it. And Kenny, you know, and his team have really done a nice job of giving up, I'll call it giving up, space so that injection molding machines could be lined up so we had a, a in the last six months clear out all these these areas that you see before you this bay and the one to the right so that we could line up uh, ultimately nine molding machines to support a customer that has a, a really uh, wicked growth curve with a product line and wow. the whole thing is you know thinking about flow how do we move raw materials how do we move finished goods with the least amount of effort. Uh, we don't want to have people acting like robots. We want to have zero pellet loss. So, you know, this handful of plastic pellets, we do not want them to end up, you know, on the floor, in the waste stream. We want them ending up as good parts. And so those are some of the initiatives and efforts that people are putting into place here uh, as we build this out. Uh, you know, it's a pretty significant capital investment for the company. Uh, but it's very meaningful for this plant and for, you know, the company in general. Let's see how you're doing that, Sean. Yeah, so this year uh, we're doing some heat staking. So we're assembling uh, two parts together to create one. And Bev here is one of our newer employees. And hey, so uh, and so uh, she's, she's really bought into the, the lean culture. So there the machine is actually going to uh, stake down a couple posts and assemble the top to the bottom. And so here's what's awesome, Paul. This process has been in production for like six months and we already have an improved process that's gonna take the cycle time down by like 40%. And so wow. we're working on some equipment in the next two weeks, we'll have that up and running. I do wanna highlight the QR code uh, located up there. So if any uh, new person is running this piece of equipment, they can scan that QR code and they have a, a video that'll show them how to operate the equipment. So Sean, Jen and the team are Sean, doing the that. In, the interesting thing about what you're looking at here is the parts are coming off the machine. And as they're coming off the machine, she's assembling them. So she's not just watching a machine run. She actually is adding value right at the machine center. 
Yep. And, and so we've got some uh, uh, other ideas for improvements in this space. But uh, as you said, we, we don't want to have a lot of stock and storage. We don't have a lot of real estate here. It costs money to inventory things. So we're trying to do things more one piece flow versus uh, queuing things up. Thank you, Bev. So we're going to walk over to the, uh, the mold building section. And I know, Paul, I think you guys build some molds as well. We do, not nearly as sophisticated as you. And I might just add to everyone, Sean, Sean has been an invaluable resource to FastCap because we do injection molding and build molds, but a very a rudimentary comparatively to what they do. We're a very small company, but Sean has helped us with so much information. It's just been unbelievable. I always go to Sean and he's been, been so generous with the information. Well, I, I appreciate the, <laughs> hopefully I don't lead you astray, but no, uh, it's it, is been about, great. It, it is about paying it forward. And you know, so I wanted to highlight the cleanliness and organization that this team uh, maintains the, these pieces of equipment and these work centers. Uh, it, that, this is their process. I mean, this is how they maintain this every day. We didn't go through and I mean, I can find things that I would say if I was doing a cleanup, I would clean up. Mm -hmm. This is what we look like day in and day out. Uh, and Kenny Incredible. and the team work to sustain it. Um, you know, just to kind of show what an injection mold looks like as it's being built. You know, so this is the plastic component and think of it like, you know, playing with Play-Doh, you got to have the mold that you want to push the Play-Doh into, right? So we've got to take steel and create very precise cuts with the, our machinery to end up with the geometry of the part that we want. And a lot of these molds have very sophisticated movements in them, actions to be able to create geometries that are more complex. So this is what the team does. They design the molds down here and they, uh, you know, send the data to the floor, to the machining centers, and then they work on machining it out and assembling it together. So Kenny's going to actually talk a little bit about some of the improvements that have been made um, to the uh, machining areas. I'm just trying to get him into the camera space here. And, uh, and so you can have a little flavor to what he's got going on. So uh, the guys have taken a look at trying to utilize uh, unattended machining off hours, uh, they load up the, the uh, tool changers will end up at nighttime. We'll try to get anywhere from five to eight hours of burn time unattended. The weekends we do the same. Uh, so last year we had roughly 1400 hours of unattended machining with a combination of three or four different areas within the shop. This year we've increased that. We've had a, a good flow of new tooling. We've been able to get those numbers up. We'll be probably roughly 2100 hours or so this year. Uh, and no, that's and huge. Machining, if everything goes well. So, yeah. So, making progress in that, those areas. And, uh, Kenny, that is both in making molds as well as the molding facility as well, unintended, unattended. Uh, yes. Uh, we've we've uh, also uh, incorporated some unattended molding hours. Uh, started that last month uh, when uh, on a second shift we were able to do some. And we've roughly, I think there was. 50 something hours in the last month that we had in that. So. Excellent. So some of the other things that can go wrong, believe me. Oh, there is. And, you know, running, yeah. running lights out, that's kind of the terminology, you know, that's thrown out in the industry. And there's some great companies that figure that out. Uh, but running without anybody in the plant, you know, you have to have systems that are set up and are very reliable, uh, very robust, because, you know, what happens if a water line breaks or if something goes on, and you're not here. Uh, we use cameras and, to kind of give us a picture of what's going on. And as I said, our IT department does a great job with connectivity. So, you know, I can be at home and I can look at cameras and see what a machining center or a, a molding machine is doing. So that's an effort that we're really putting some time, time towards. Wow. And cool. so right now you're looking at end of arm tools. So when we mold the parts and we want to pull that out of the, pull that plastic part out of the mold. And I think you do some of this as well, Paul. That's um, correct. We, we use uh, robots with end of arm that grabs the parts and we got to design that. So the team here, rather than outsourcing, uh, we want to try to use our talent and our capabilities in-house and save, you know, the really time nice. and effort and money and all the waste of communication with people externally. Uh, so this, this team here is working on end of arm tools that'll, that'll end up help, helping out in the manufacturing side where we're making plastic parts. And Sean, does this facilities support your other facilities in terms of end of arm and injection molds? 
So with mold build, yes, uh, in, uh, end of arm tool, that's something that we just started this year and it's been okay. primarily for this facility, but it is okay. in our Pennsylvania facility, we're building our own end of arm tools up there as okay. well. Excellent. So you can see we label all the, the uh, the steels. So we use a lot of different steels inside of our mold building facility. Uh, sometimes wow. you're dealing with aluminum and brilliant, you know, titanium. It, it's it's a, a huge mix. Really so. well, really well organized. Incredible. And then uh, easy, no dark spots. I want to highlight something over here that's uh, pretty wild. So these guys have not been uh, They've not been out here molding for you know 10 years or anything like that, but they're thinking about lean. They're thinking about when I set a mold up, we've got to control the temperature of it. And we do that with water. And so you've got a hot and cold line, you know, in and out. And normally when you do a mold change, you know, your your changeover time, that's downtime, right? We're not producing. We want to reduce that smed, single minute exchange of dye. So they've come up with this manifold system so that when we pull this mold out, we don't have to disconnect all these little lines. We only have to make a connection to one in and one out with a bigger line and that reduces our time. And in some cases you can save an hour or two per setup with reducing uh, by, by having those water lines on a manifold versus individualized. And it also eliminates uh, potential error, right? What happens if I switch a line around inadvertently I don't get an in, in on the inside, I put it out on the inside, I can end up causing a quality issue. So they've been working really hard on those things too. And, and the large lines are quick disconnects too, it looks like. They are, yeah. And you know, you can see this team here, they work with some pretty good size molds. You know, I think we can go up to 15,000 oh pounds in gosh. this facility. These are, with These the, are huge molds. They're, they're pretty good size. And you can see they're working on nice plates here. Uh, that helps with the ability to clamp them in. I know you just went to mag platen on your new machines. I'm a little exactly. jealous, but uh, yeah. yeah. So you can see how they've done a nice job of plumbing this in. So when the oh, mold change beautiful. happens, you're just beautiful. one in, one out, and you're good to go. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So now we're gonna take a little stroll over uh, to our molding side uh, of the business. So the bay uh, that's gonna be located over here it's got in three injection molding machines. We have two more that are coming in in another three weeks. Uh, and then we'll have another four of them that will be coming in before the end of 2023 to really this, as I said, hockey stick growth uh, to our customer. So this molding machine right here, uh, running totally unattended. Uh, we have an auto boxer. So we invested in the technology of auto boxing where we just fill the box queue up and the robots automatically interfacing with the, uh, the mold to pick the parts and then it places them into the box and it counts them and then it advances the box full box down to the layer the end of the conveyance so we can queue up and act, actually not have to be over here for several hours as we're working to fill boxes up and that's the so end of arm uh, yeah you can yeah the end of arm is up on the on the robot so that's one of the more simple ones that we have uh, we have some pretty complex ones that uh, we work with as well but we've deliberately designed this plant around the idea of eliminating those non-value added touches. We don't want people to struggle, you know, and be robots with what they're doing. Uh, we want them to add value. We want you to think like a process engineer. How am I, how am I always, you know, making something a little bit better versus struggling with trying to move things, grab things, handle things, you know, those, those paper cuts, I remember one time I told you this, I think it's all paper cuts. There are right. 10 billion of them out here and we just want to keep picking away at them, keep picking away at them. I love it. So, I love so, it. So uh, LJ here, we hired LJ as our production manager. Uh, he comes from the plastics industry with uh, several years and uh, he's just a spitfire. Uh, he's, you know, all over this floor, loves the lean culture. I'm gonna let him talk for a couple minutes about his experience before versus now and you know what it's been like being with us awesome. for the last few months. Hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you Excellent. guys. So I've been in manufacturing for 18 years now. I started up and set up, you know, just working on tools and stuff. And one of my biggest frustrations, you know, coming up in the industry was finding tools because a lot of places have shop boxes. You know, that's a box that everybody uses. So the problem is getting people to put it back, right? But 
So what we've did here is we created this toolbox where everything's laid out, everything's in Kaizen foam, everything's labeled so everything can go back. You can quickly just check to make sure that everything's there at the end of your shift and you don't have to look for anything. And right. the time savings that you have, just not having to look for a tool, you know, I don't have to walk all the way down there to nine or come all the way up. I can quickly see, boom, everything's here. I know it's going to be there when I come to it to get it. And let's say that I'm inside of a machine working on something I'm like, oh, I need this tool. Anybody that comes into the shop, even day one, they could walk over and I could say, I need a 7 16 nut driver. The drawer's clearly labeled. They can find the nut drivers. They can find exactly what I need and help me to cut down on my downtime of working on something. And then, of course, we have the mighty Excalibur. Now, as you can see, it's almost as big as I am. Wow. And everything looks like it's GPS coordinated too. It's green color for the green toolbox. Is there a green mark on all the tools? Yeah, so you can see they're color coding that for the toolbox. Right. So that if we expand and need additional toolboxes, depending on how many mold changes we'll end up with right. when we have nine presses, we may have some different colors there as well. Beautiful. But we but we want to have fun, Paul. I mean, you 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 say you know lean should be fun, okay. right? Work should be. We can make it fun. So, you know, we talk a lot, it's like the mighty Excalibur. When we needed a right. torque wrench that could put 500 foot pounds of torque on it, I'm like, I don't know what that even looks like, right? And right. so, you know, wow. the mighty Excalibur, we wanna have some fun with things. What One of the things we're doing with each one of our uh, workstations is creating a standardized model. So information is always in the same location. Uh, we always want to have it so that it's easy for operators to be able to find the things they need. We train heavily on, you know, reaction plans. What if something doesn't look right or smell right or taste right, whatever. We want to have people know what to do so that we don't end up with a big quality spill. You know, they, the kind of the, if you find it on the manufacturing floor, it's going to cost you a buck. If you find it in your warehouse, it's going to cost you a hundred bucks. When you find it out in the, in the field, it's going to cost you a thousand dollars. And typically Ooh, really you multiply well that, you multiply that out by like five. With, which right. is what our in what our our experience is now, Sean. Very important point that that desk that desk area is standardized throughout the entire corporation. So if I go to Erie, Pennsylvania, the same desk, the same information, the same place. Right. So if you go to Erie, PA, you're going to find the first time quality reaction plan in the upper right hand corner of the workstation at the machine. So when we bring people from facility to facility, uh, you know when we you know, need support or people need to go visit or whatever, they always know where to go to find things. And that's deliberate. I mean, you think about how difficult it's to do one thing multiple times in the same plant, but to do it across an organization, you know, we, we as a team have to be pretty well synced up. And that's been, I think, a, a neat thing about our lean journey and our culture development. Excellent. So I'm gonna hit on this area because I know, uh, you know, people ask, how do you move material? And again, when we move, you know, thousands of pounds of material a day, uh, we don't want to do it with a pitcher, right? I mean, we could, we could take a five gallon pail and move it out to the, to the molding machine. But over here, uh, we've designed a system which is meant to be very much hands off. We want to have a system where material conveyance is all done automatically. And it just tells us what it needs and it takes care of itself. And if it needs maintenance, you know, says, hey, a filter is coming up for cleaning, whatever, it'll tell us those things. So this is something that uh, when LJ arrived, he was pretty psyched up about uh, because a lot of plants do not do this kind of investment. Uh, but for us, when we look at creating a very productive plant with uh, high levels of efficiency, we didn't want a bunch of people moving around, moving materials. We just don't think that's a good use of their time. And it's tough to find people. So uh, the system here. So I'm gonna let LJ kind of give me some, uh, give all of us a little bit of a flavor for his experiences and how it's been different with other areas he's worked. Uh, yeah, so everything in this material system is controlled from this touch screen. I can turn pumps on, turn pumps off, turn dryers on. I actually have these dryers and uh, these hoppers on a timer to start up every Sunday night, because that's when we start up. So everything's dry and ready to go as soon as our people get here on Sunday night. They don't have to mess with this. They don't have to do anything with it. it automatically comes on. It's been a, a huge, huge help from what I'm used to in previous jobs that I worked where we had a press side dryer. We had people having to come in 
several hours before their shift just to turn them on. We've eliminated all that with this system. And another great thing about this system is you can't see one from here, but if we go on to the other side, everything has a QR code on it. So I have an app on my phone that links me to tech support automatically. I can scan the QR code, pull up my app, and it will link me directly to tech support for whatever piece of equipment that is. Wow. And so LJ, so it sounds like the company is very predisposed to investing in technology or investing in things that are going to make your life better. You're not fighting with them to get that stuff done. Yeah, we're absolutely not fighting. And I have been through the, the fight, the war, the struggle for many years, and we don't have yeah. it here. We've really Isn't eliminated a lot of that. Look at this system. This is crazy. Yeah, so and everything's labeled with what material it is. The hoppers are labeled with what material goes in it. And we've even labeled these pipes over here that actually feed the material to the presses. So there's no confusion as to where stuff goes. So Hopper we, Bay is coming out of, yes. and it tells me what press it's going to. I see. So that way no one can mix it up. Exactly. We have a system similar in our facility, no, nowhere as sophisticated as yours because of you guys, because you guys consulted with us on what we should do. And our system is incredible. Yeah, so Paul, it's, it's uh, again, setting this plant up and the people, I mean, we talk a lot in lean about how in leadership position, managers, whatever you want to call it, people make decisions and then everybody else has to live with them. Right. And so when we looked at designing this plant, I looked at it through the lens of, I'm going to be running it. Like I'm going to physically be in it doing things. What do I want? And what will that, what will make it so that I can be as lean as possible? as efficient as possible, not struggle. You know, even right. like this, this uh, Gaylord sweeper, normally you put a Gaylord of flat, you know, this huge box of material on a tipper, and then you got to tip it. And then you got to come over and get the shovel. And many times the shift you're back and forth. This thing automatically sweeps as it, as a, the level goes down and pulls Incredible. the material into the, into the unit. So here I'm going to jog it just so you can see. So there's little brush brushes that sweep the plastic and pull it over into the area where the vacuum can suck it up. I mean, it's cool Amazing. technology. Now, right. I'll tell you a key thing with all this is, you gotta maintain it. You've got to you know, have a good preventive maintenance plan. You've got to have good people. Otherwise it's like a, you know, it's like your Ferrari. If you don't yeah. treat it well, uh, you know, your Porsche is not gonna go down the road. Your Ferrari's right, not gonna right, go as right. well as it could. So we've got to keep things, you know, well-maintained. But as, as uh, LJ said, you know, everything's labeled uh, and we want to make sure it's very easy and intuitive for people to kind of understand what we're doing. So, Sean, one of the questions that came up is what are your key uh, KPIs? Yeah, so we look at on time delivery. Right. So that's something that this plan is developing, you know, as we start to ship uh, product. And you can actually see behind LJ some of our first shipments are going out uh, from this plan on some of these molds. So on time delivery. Uh, we, as a corporation, we track our SMED, single minute exchange of dye. We okay. track our, um, <clears throat> we track scrap rates. So across our machines, and this plant is actually getting a, a new ERP, MRP system. And we're tying all the molding machines into that system. So we'll have a more real time view of, of performance. So right now it's more manual in nature. Uh, okay. We track our cycle efficiency. So if we say we should be at 35 seconds or 22 seconds, are we actually matching up with it? Uh, we track cavitation, how many cavities, how many parts should come out every time the mold opens? Um, okay. Are we meeting that? Um, and then we have a number of, you know, kind of financial metrics that we track and, you know, just kind of other things, uh, you know, quality okay. performance is huge uh, in our industry. So uh, we're always on lookout for that. Uh, so, you know, as I said, you know, we're below 0.5 def defects per million uh, in our plant. So, you know, that's a really great Amazing. quality rating, but we know yeah. we have more to do, right? We know, right. and it's, and it's like a lot of things. If you don't keep at it, you know, you will go backwards and, right. you know, COVID was tough. It was hard on the business. You know, most businesses felt it. We couldn't interact the way that we do. We couldn't uh, engage the way we do. But, you know, Kenny and his team here, they kept doing their drumbeat meetings. They socially distanced. Uh, in our other plants, we went to more virtual kind of meeting. Uh, we really just felt it was important to keep, keep pushing it, you know? Right. Is there any metrics on tracking the ideas from employees? That's another question that came up. Yeah, so we, we do not have like a, 
uh, play to pay or pay to play kind of scheme or, you know, I don't want to call it a scheme, but uh, right. we aren't looking for hey, LJ or Sean or, you know, Kenny needs to come up with six ideas a week and implement them. We really want it to be something that few people feel compelled to do. Organic. Um, yeah, organic is, is really a good way of explaining it. And we do, okay. at the end of the year, everybody gets a formal review and, you know, we grade ourselves according to some of those criteria. Do I feel like I'm a, a, a good contributor to our drumbeat meeting process? Have I led them? Am I okay. coming up with two second improvements? Those are discussions that people get to have with their supervisor, manager, um, you know, and, and, you know, as a, as a manager, you get the chance to kind of say, hey, are you, <laughs> are you doing these things? You know, I haven't felt it, right, you know, right. um, and so, Sh yeah, it's, 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 it's been a good process for us. So, Sean, another question, is there a lean champion that makes sure the ideas are implemented and how do you, how do you track ideas? And you probably, yeah. answered, you're not really tracking the ideas, but I think you're the lean champion, aren't you? Well, I mean, I think I have a cheerleading uh, bent to me, right? You know, I, I love this stuff. As uh, you know, right. I said in the beginning, in 2011, when I watched the first video of you in your morning walk, I was either going to move to Washington or I was going to create Washington where I was at, right? I was right. going to create awesome. a fast cap. And so I, I'm, I'm wired this way. Uh, and it's helped me in my personal life, you know, with a lot of, you know, organization and frustration being eliminated. But uh We've, we have a lot of people that they, they sync up with that ideal, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm going to pull on the, the tip of the ship, but, you know, there are people pulling too that want to make something great. Uh, and that's why, you know, hiring deliberately has been important for us, you know, really asking the questions. Can you see yourself being a big part of this uh, when we're, uh, when we're, when you're working here? So, right. yeah, I'm not, I'm not a uh, walk around and checklist everything out. Uh, you know, we do Gemba walks, we do work on things like that, but uh, we want it to be organic. We want people to feel the real reason why we want to do right. this and see but it. There, in is, work. there is no specific lean champion, so to speak, that helps implement no. ideas in each facility. You just work together as a team to get them done. Yep. We work together as a team. Uh, there's, you know, we have degreed black belt, green belt people in our company. We don't even really focus on that. Yeah, that's a, you know, I love a feather, it. I love feather it. in the cap. I love it. I but we it. want to, we want everybody. I mean, it's awesome, Paul, when you hire somebody and you see that, you know, every other place they've worked, they've been, you know, minimized, dismissed, dismissed. Yeah, exactly. they've been dismissed and they come here and, you know, next thing you know, they're coming up with a prototype cardboard thing to help guide parts. And, right. and I'm like, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're an engineer, right? You're a process wow. engineer. Wow, 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 and, wow. And, and I think people sync up and connect with that in, in big ways. So it's like Viking Academy. Imagine spending your life, you know, as in, you know, in, in jobs where, you know, you know, you're bouncing around and now you become a, a graduate of Viking Academy. You get to be a part of a celebration. You get this nice executive backpack and, you know, you got the same one that the president carries, right, right. of the company. We're all in this together. Nobody is more or less important, right? If, if, Bev, doesn't, if Bev doesn't show up and have a good day, uh, it's actually worse for us than if Kelly has a bad day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Incredible. Uh, if she doesn't show up, we're really in trouble. So right. we're all important. You know, uh, everybody has a different role. You know, some of us have different skill sets or talents, but uh, we're all important to this process. So let me ask you a question because we're coming to the close here. We've been asking, asking the questions that have been going along. If anybody has any questions, just type in the chat and I'll ask them. But uh, what advice would you give to people? What is the number one thing you would tell people to make sure they do in implementing a two-second lean culture? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like when with you and your, uh, your journeys, right, not only in lean, but in lean health, try to make it simple and make sure that you're committed to it, you know, as a team. I, I've had great value in having peers and others that sync up with me in this idea. Yes, we can do this and we're going to do it. Um, I don't feel alone in that within this company. I feel like there are a number of people that are right there standing beside me. And that makes me feel like I can charge harder. I think yes, that's an important yes. part of it. But you keeping know, it simple, people that want to go out and just automatically be fast cap, you, you've done this for you know, over a decade. You right. know, you've got to step forward in it. 
It's step by step. You know, right. I, I, I often get the question, people say, you know, my boss doesn't get it or my coworkers don't get it. I always tell people the first thing you need to do is put your head down and worry about your own waste. But at some point, you need to be with like minded people, you need to find an organization that believes in what you believe in. And I think this is what you're conveying is that you're with a team of people that, that believe that developing right. people and that continuous improvement is the answer for 99% of the problems that we face on a daily basis. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I come into this plant, when I come into our plants, it's like I'm with my brothers and my sister, right? With right, Jen right. and with Kenny. I mean, Kenny, maybe you think we're brothers. He's a little older right. than I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and then we got LJ. I just love the camaraderie that Two Second Lean has brought into my career. Excellent. The camaraderie when I go into our facilities, the camaraderie when we give tours, uh, you know, we've had 40, 50 companies come through our Pennsylvania plant, the camaraderie right. with people with similar problems, trying to figure them out and, you know, be able to say, you know what, it's not always just, we've got to bury the burden for Kenny to think through this idea and how we figured out. We have so many talented people and we just, yeah. we waste that talent if we don't engage them in two second lean absolutely you know? absolutely beautiful beautiful story absolutely beautiful so you guys did a great job thank you everyone uh, just inspiring what you've done sean i want people to know sean has been a huge help to me over the 10 years that we've known each other 11 years it has just been amazing we talk pretty regularly he's always advising me on things whenever there's an issue with uh, multiple shifts i always direct people to sean because nobody's done it better than viking plastic so thank you for all the help you've given to yeah. us it's been immense well we appreciate what you do and you know you kind of encourage us to be better uh yeah. <laughs> you know so uh and your team is phenomenal if i could take everybody out here out to see it i would uh that's why i love the fact that you are on video and you're just yeah, yeah, sharing yeah, yeah. with the world i love it yeah and i got a couple comments awesome worth getting up at 2 a.m from new zealand to watch isn't oh that cool? great isn't that thank cool? you so much wow, wow, yeah wow. is that awesome? we appreciate that okay we're gonna wrap it up now you guys again thanks again you guys great job Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Brought to you by paulacres.net, where you'll find all Paul's books and lean resources for free, free including the new two-second lean play app, like Audible, but free. To listen to Lean is Lean on the two-second lean play app at paulacres.net.